Welcome back, everyone. I'm Sarah Peck, and this is the Startup Pregnant Podcast. I'm in a really wonderful community of women and entrepreneurs that are either thinking about having kids, they are pregnant, or they are having kids. And we talk a lot about all the different experiences of pregnancy and parenting and being a business owner. And so the other day, I asked people to respond to this prompt. It says, no one ever told me this would happen in pregnancy or parenting. No one ever told me this would happen. I got such interesting answers and responses and such a warm and generous conversation. I wanted to take today's episode and read some of the answers out loud. Welcome to the Startup Pregnant Podcast, where we talk to creative leaders about what it means to be an entrepreneur and a parent. I'm your host, Sarah K. Peck. Life can be really unpredictable, especially when you're getting ready to add a baby to your life. The sponsor of this episode, Aeroflow Breast Pumps, is dedicated to making the hassle of getting your breast pump a little bit easier. Actually, a lot easier. Head to aeroflowbreastpumps.com slash startup to have them help you qualify for a free breast pump through insurance. And stick around because at the end of this episode, I'll walk you through how it works and tell you a little bit more of how Aeroflow Breast Pumps can save you so much time. As always, hit subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts. And if you have a minute to leave us a review, we would love that. If you need any of the show notes from the show, head to startuppregnant.com. No one told me how gross kids are. Nobody told me that my two-year-old would finger paint his walls with poop because he didn't want to nap. That same kid ate a bird turd off of the car. Nobody told me that so much bleeding would happen post-birth. Good God, those mesh undies. And how quickly I would cave on all of my unrealistic parenting ideals. I thought I'd never bribe my kids, I'd never feed them McDonald's, but that went out the window. No one ever told me that there isn't any getting my life back once the baby is born. There's only the new normal, and that's not a bad thing. Nobody told me that the six-week sex hold would actually feel way too short. Apologies to my husband. Nobody told me that the hardest thing is not the sleep deprivation, and the hardest times are actually not in the beginning. Nobody told me that postpartum depression can also be OCD or anxiety. No one ever told me that I would mourn my old life and feel badly about it, even though I love my kid. I love, 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 love my kids so much. No one ever told me how rattled my marriage would be. Nobody told me how absolutely vulnerable having a baby would make me feel. I'm just going to put one word in there, says a woman named Jessica, and that's hemorrhoids. They don't put changing tables in men's restrooms, and so it defaults to you And you should push the hell back on that way earlier. No one ever told me that sleeping like a baby actually means sleeping completely unpredictably. Or that babies are supposed to go to bed between 6 and 7 p.m. Yeah, right. That never happened in our life ever. I have spent hours stressing about baby sleep. More hours than I care to admit. Where do they do it? In what clothes? What position? For how long? Has a nap been too long? Is he too hot? Is he too cold? Why can't we just say a happy baby can stay awake and a sleepy baby will sleep? No one ever told me that I would yearn for, but never feel that I was done about having babies. No one told me that what felt like an equal partnership pre-baby might not feel equal with kids. The mental load is real. No one ever told me that I would feel sick 24-7 for eight months. I was told pregnancy would feel like butterflies fluttering in my uterus. Nope, I hated it. And I'm tired of feeling guilty for that. I was in unbearable pain. I was an emotional wreck. And I was so, so sick. I developed preeclampsia and I had to have an emergency C-section at eight months, which nobody told me could be a thing that could happen too. 
Nobody told me that fully healing from pregnancy and birth takes a really freaking long time and uh, that my belly button would be forever weird. Nobody told me that sleep deprivation can manifest itself as just pure hatred, most of which gets projected onto my husband. You know, no matter how tired, exhausted, or sleep deprived I was in, whether or not I was in zombie mode, my body would go on autopilot to get up and feed and tend that baby. No one ever told me that my heart could feel this much. With the kids, the roller coaster of emotions is startling. On each of these comments and notes from the parents in this group, we ended up having these side conversations about each one of these things, about why there aren't changing tables in different bathrooms and what happens and the hilarity of our children when they really decide to act out and the various experiences of pregnancy. There are people who loved it and enjoyed it and had an easy pregnancy. And there are people for whom it was really difficult. And there are people who recovered from birth quickly and people for whom it took a really long time. And each of these conversations just shows how wide and varied the experiences can be of pregnancy and parenting. And one of the goals with the Startup Pregnant podcast, this that you're listening to right now, one of my biggest goals with this show is to just start by telling more stories. We have to get away from the myth that there's one way that it's going to look. And if we don't talk about something, it doesn't mean it's not happening. So by starting the conversation, I want to just start to have a little more empathy for the wide range of experiences. And if you're a mom that hated being pregnant, there's nothing wrong with that. Like That's you and you do you. And if you love being pregnant, newsflash, we can coexist with multiple points of view and multiple perspectives. We don't have to agree and we don't have to be at odds because we don't necessarily agree about everything. There's no one path to pregnancy. There's no one path to parenting. And even in the same body, my body, Someone in this thread had said how much she really didn't like pregnancy. And boy, I did not like pregnancy the first time around. And my body in a second pregnancy feels different. It feels manageable. It feels okay. And I don't know whether or not that's because I've done it before. I'm just like, oh yeah, here we go. I'm familiar with this. It's not as startling. Or if it's just a different body in a different time and a different experience and a different baby. And so this one isn't as bad. And it's really making me realize how unique each individual human is. And right now, there's two of them. There's one inside of me and there's me. And those combinations and those pairings and those energies, it's just so many ways. There's so many ways it can happen. So thanks as always for listening. And if you have an answer to this fill in the blank, no one ever told me that this would happen in pregnancy or no one ever told me this about parenting. Go leave a comment on the blog and join the conversation. You can find all of our episodes at startuppregnant.com, as well as several of our resources and guides for entrepreneurs and for mamas. So thanks as always for listening, and I'll see you on the next episode. I promised at the beginning of the episode to tell you a little bit more about the pumping journey and about how Aeroflow Breast Pumps works. They are the sponsor of this episode. So for all of you breastfeeding and pumping mamas, here is the info that you wanted. Aeroflow Breast Pumps makes the process of getting a breast pump covered through your insurance as easy as possible. They have dedicated and informed breast pump specialists to help you navigate insurance by taking care of the paperwork, the phone calls, and the prescription requests so that you can take it easy. They're available by phone, text, or email to answer any questions you have during this exciting time in your life. One of the trickiest things is the timing of everything. A lot of insurance plans only allow you to get a pump within 30 days of your due date. Let me tell you, figuring out when that baby is going to arrive and then getting everything done within these exact timeframes can be really hard. They take care of everything, including contacting your physician for a prescription, recommending the best breast pump options for you and your lifestyle, billing and processing those insurance claims, and shipping the breast pump to your door free of charge. The entire process 
is totally free. So if you want to work with them to get your breast pump, go to aeroflowbreastpumps.com slash startup, and they will get you started right away. Thanks for being a sponsor of Working Pumping Mamas, Aeroflow Breast Pumps. And you know, I always say this and I mean it. Leave us a review on iTunes if you like our show. It takes a few seconds and it really does help us a lot. If you want more of what we're talking about, go over to startuppregnant.com and get on our email list. We send out a weekly newsletter with time-saving tips for parents and entrepreneurs. And I always include a weekly gadget or tool or something awesome that we've stumbled upon to help make your life just a little bit easier. And as always, you can reach out to us at hello at startuppregnant.com. We love hearing from you. 